a whole marathon on trails in the cheapest running shoes we could buy. What could possibly go wrong? I think it's time to get going. Yeah, let's do this. Three, two, one, let's go. Have we all been taken in by the marketing hype? Do we need to spend over 200 pounds on a pair of shoes? Do we need to spend over 100 pounds? Do we need to spend anything at all? Well, we had some cheap shoes left over from a challenge, although Mark and I did actually have to go and buy a pair. Specifically, we found the cheapest running shoes that we possibly could, and in true GTM fashion, we're gonna be putting our bodies, or in particular in this case, our feet on the line to find out. It wasn't long ago that spending over £100 on a pair of running shoes was only for the most serious runners. These days, spending double that is not uncommon with the top end carbon fibre shoes coming in as much as £270. Yeah, well in fairness to the running shoe brands, running shoes themselves used to all consist of an EVA midsole and those that were more technically advanced would just have different densities of that EVA to help limit pronation. Yeah, these days it's all technologically advanced super foams, carbon plates, painted rocker shapes and high-tech uppers. Shoes are lighter, more responsive, more forgiving, more comfortable, and a lot faster. And all of that comes at a cost. Yeah, I mean, running is all about being an all-inclusive sport. All you've ever needed is a pair of running shoes, shorts, and a t-shirt, and off you go. And we like that, and we think that running should hold on to that. Yeah, so we're standing up to these marketing claims that money buys quality. And because we're GTN, we're taking things to extremes. Yes, you definitely don't need to spend £270 to be able to enjoy running, or even to be fast at running. But is the cost of running shoes 10% substance, 90% marketing? In which case, can you just spend £27 on a pair of shoes, or in our case, a little over 30 Well, we're going to be putting that theory to the test and putting these shoes that have had every expense saved, including that on marketing, to the ultimate test. So, we have our cheap shoes. Let's show you what we've bought. Sadly, James is ill, so couldn't take part, but looking at his shoes, we should probably send someone around to his house to check that he is actually sick. He's gone to extremes with these Amazon specials, and I'd certainly fake a doctor's note rather than run a marathon in them. Meanwhile, I went for something I thought people are more realistically going to buy, but still very cheap. These are the Adidas Duramo. I picked them up for a little under £40. Whilst they are referred to as running shoes, the product description only seems to discuss wearing them for the gym or for an evening with friends. Interesting. They look pretty good though, but the grip is fairly minimal. These are the shoes I've bought. They're Decathlon's finest. Well, maybe not finest, but the best I could get for under £40. The women's trail running TR shoes. And they're described as a trail running shoe for training or competition up to 30 kilometers on easy terrain. Apparently designed for beginners for trail and even some road sections. Oh, and they have all round features and flexibility, whatever that means. And we have our roots. It is a marathon on trails. It was actually a trail marathon event until a few years ago, the Neolithic Marathon. It is the Sarsen Trail and follows a route of Neolithic sites from Avebury to the famous Stonehenge. It is 42.4 kilometers or 26.3 miles and covers all sorts of terrain. So a real shoe tester. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've taken the safer, the safer route, I think. Slow and steady. <sighs> Down that rough hill, and my feet are hurting. I think they're just gripping inside the shoes because they're flying all over the place. So I'm debating whether I want to tighten them, but then they feel quite tight and uncomfortable anyway. So not really sure. Just trying to suss it out. Meanwhile, I just slipped my way down that hill pretty much the entire way.
Uh, we're a little over 7k in now. Is that all? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful though, look at this. Amazing. Um, fields are starting to thaw out a little bit, or it feels like they are. I've had quite a few slippages, particularly on the last downhill. How are yours? The, um, the, the shoes are kind of the same place, but my feet are moving within the shoe on the like uneven bits, which is a different kind of feeling. Okay. So my, my shoes actually feel really nice. Like my feet are comfortable in them. I just don't have any confidence in them at the moment. <laughs> Got my personal gate opener. Thank you very much. Oh, this is a bit sketchy. Call me a geek, but I love this stuff. You've got all the terrace sets on the hillside there, just kind of those ridges that are formed naturally from saturation of the soil and the sheep walking over and stuff. Um, but the moment you can see the ice settling on it, this is what I run for. Maybe not to run in these cheap 30 pound shoes, but. Still having a good time. Well, we've done our first bit of off-road trails in our very cheap shoes. How are yours faring? Well, they've got a bit of mud on them. They're looking more authentic. <laughs> are they gripping okay? Yeah. I mean, That's good. Haven't really tested them fully, but we've had a bit of ice and we survived that. Yeah, early days. Um, mine are literally like your gym daps. I mean, they've literally got no grip on them at all. So I'm quite pleased it's icy today. So I think I get found out quite quickly off road. But what is worrying is when we go onto some tarmac and it is icy, I really have zero grip. So. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. All right, so we're about a quarter of the way in. We're in a place called All Canning, so just over 10K, coming on to 11K. Um, how are your shoes, Heather? I've just had to do a little toe release. <laughs> it's not a, a physio term, but I was just getting it. It actually came on really quickly, just a moment ago, but my left foot toes were just burning and like felt like they were being squashed. However, my left shoe feels like the looser one, and when we were running down the hill, my foot's moving inside the shoe, so. The toe box does look quite narrow. On yeah, there. and I, I normally, I think I have quite a you much wider shoe. You can actually see your shoe. heel. Yeah, sorry, your um, the but, ball. Yeah, it's like coming time. over, yeah. It's yeah. just, um, and what, we're only a quarter of the way, so. Um, yeah. Mine actually, um, the the fit of them is quite good, but I am actually starting to feel on the ball of my foot. It's kind of like a pinching sensation where the kind of the insole and the upper meet. Oh, blister which, time. Yeah, it's, it's okay at the moment, but I can imagine another 20k or something, you know, be problematic. Yeah. Anyway, onwards. Yeah. It's a bit of a history trail today as well. I know it's meant to be about the shoes, but we're going between two Neolithic sites. And right now, we're going past an ancient burial mound. It looks like you can go inside. I don't think we've got time for that today. But uh, yeah, Avery, Stonehenge, both built around 2500 BC, roughly. No one really knows quite why or how. It's talks of the stones being transported from Pembrokeshire in Wales, which is a hell of a distance. And considering back then, it's not like they had lorries to do it in. Even now, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, they're sort of as religious sites. Um, so yeah, pretty cool trails. This could be interesting. I know what I've got to run yeah, down now. Right down. Downhill. It's amazing. Okay. 
a little continuation of our GTN history tour. Uh, we're now on the Imber Trail, which goes around to the perimeter of the Salisbury Plain. Time for a little stew update and an excuse to walk up a hill. It's been a nice rolling course, but another hill onto Mark's kindly marching alongside. It's giving our feet a little change in their shoes, but I'm concerned because we're at 27k, which means in theory, I'm only 3k away from my shoes limit. Now, part of their marketing spiel for my Decathlon 39.99 shoes was that they are designed for trail running for distances up to 30k. I'm curious as to what's going to happen. <laughs> Just explode. Yeah, I mean, I think my body at 30k is going to be complaining, but I'm hoping that the shoes are going to go beyond their marketing and go 12k further. How are yours holding it anyway? Same old story, they're just very, very solid. I could do a little bit of giving them. I'm feeling it in my ankles more than I should be. They're very um, rigid around the, the ankle area as well, and we've got a lot of off camber here. Yeah. It's digging into my ankle quite a lot. Um, definitely not like my usual day to day training shoes, that's for sure. <laughs> we're getting by, we're doing all right. Yeah, it's been, I'm quite enjoying the fact we're no longer on the real muddy bit because my feet were sliding everywhere. So my shoes are currently super loose to make up for the discomfort and surviving so far. Well, from 30k onwards, the conversation dried up a little and it was just a matter of survival. Heather took to the tactic of a mini break every 10 kilometers to relieve her feet of the pressure from her cheap shoes. But in the final few kilometers, I'd say our lack of fitness and conditioning became evident and no longer could we blame our footwear for the slowing and pace. However, once we were over the hill and Stonehenge came into view, we knew nothing could stop us reaching that finish line, not even some 30 pound running shoes. Well done, good work. Oh, right. well done you, well done. Nice one. Well done shoes for sort of carrying us. We made it. There it is, almost touching the stones. So where's the car? <laughs> um, I don't know, you're collecting it, aren't you? <laughs> what do you think then? I mean, we made it. We're here, we're in one piece. I mean, I think I might have lost something around my toes. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll find Skin out tomorrow. Skin or toenails. Yeah, or one, one or the other. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've been thinking about this a little bit, particularly over the last 10k. You've had to We made it. They were pretty good on the whole. Um, but what I will say is I know 42.2k a marathon is a long way any day <laughs> and you're going to feel tired after, but I definitely feel like I'm feeling it more than I should be, particularly in my ankles, my calves. Um, so if I was, I, I think ordinarily with the shoes I normally run in, I'd probably be able to get out for a little run tomorrow or the next day. I'm not sure I can. I am, I am having a rest day tomorrow. I mean, for me, it was like my whole, for some reason, my left shoe just felt so tight. So I've got it on the loosest, like it's basically yeah. just hanging off my foot. So as a result, obviously my foot's been moving around, but it, we were lucky that, well, I was lucky that we had the rough terrain first. Cause if I tried running now, let my shoe just like, if my foot oh, just comes yeah. out, they're like, but that's all I, yeah. I mean, it just don't fit my feet basically. Yeah. So yeah, yeah mine was I mean, definitely sort of the foam technology mm. or something in them it definitely I'm, I'm excited to put my normal running shoes yeah. back on oh and also i would say with mine i mean look at the amount of grip that they have but they just with that grip collect all of salisbury plains clay yeah so i feel like i've just been carrying these lead weights around on my it's feet it's interesting though, if, if you're buying these shoes as a newcomer to running you probably you wouldn't know any different you know, they're okay they feel all I'm right sure and they get you running which is great but 
there is I'm I'm noticing a big difference between my normal yeah. on running shoes that I run in my monsters actually I really like compared to these. So. But I mean I used to just run in any old shoes. True. Like and then but then obviously I didn't run as far. So that's I think as you get further you do need to you get more return on yeah, the value yeah. of your shoes. Like the more you spend you're spending so long in them. I mean, also there's a whole argument about shod versus non-shod running mm. and our feet de- oh. detraining because uh. we've been running in these advanced shoes. Oh, that's yeah. another video. Anyway. I mean, we had 42k to talk about that, <laughs> but, we, but we didn't. Uh, it's very quiet yeah. for the last 10k. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we made it, and that's that's one thing, and I'm proud of that. So, uh, yeah, thanks, guys, for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Um, and now I think it's time to go and get a hot chocolate yeah. and into some water. Sit down. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs>